Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes has a pretty deep and very fun class system that is satisfying to truly master. Spending time on your favorite unit by unlocking and mastering an array of unusual classes for them just for certain abilities to be equipped to create a complete powerhouse feels great, and necessary for harder difficulties that demand you take on more powerful enemies in a tighter time frame to fulfill the S rank requirement. You want to hit big numbers, and you want to hit them fast. The purpose of this guide is to quickly and easily explain how to progress a unit into a powerhouse. This isn't a guide on making the perfect combination of class abilities for every unit in the game, nor is it a tier list of any kind. This is for beginner players to learn how the system works, especially with more obscure and less known mechanics within the unit progression. And I also apologize for my congested nasaliness, I am dealing with a bit of a sore throat right now, so yeah. Let's start with the basics of the training instructor. The core functions, train, level up, slash reset, and acquire class are your big three mechanics within this area. Mock battle is a straightforward test of your skills, which is pretty self-explanatory, so there's no real need to explain, but it does help with quickly equipping abilities just to test things out. Training slash acquire class. The basics of all three options are self-evident to an extent as well. With train, you select two units to train together. You also set which class they work on. You can train any class you have unlocked, and the unit doesn't need to be in that class to train that class. For example, Edelgard can be an armor knight class while training mage. In practice, you can do story missions and grind class EXP for armor knight while spending training points on Edelgard's mage experience. The amount of experience gained is influenced by several variables. The higher the partner's matching weapon rank, the more EXP they will receive. So if you want to optimize class EXP gain while training, try doing something like that. Even if they have the same weapon rank, a bonus will still apply. Upgrading the training facility's corresponding weapon type will also increase the EXP rate. As you can see, every unit is driven towards a branch in the class tree, which will also increase the rate. Every time a star is reached in a class, the unit will learn a class ability. Not all class abilities are fixed to the same thing, however, and this is where one starts to realize the depth of this game's class customization system. If you go into the convoy and select change class, or if you're simply in the acquire class menu and hit Y, you will scroll through the preset abilities that are locked to that class, and learned class abilities. You will notice by sifting through this menu that there are different class abilities that any given character can learn. For example, some characters like Edelgard will learn Wild Abandon upon getting one star in Brigand, while Dedu and Mercedes will learn Deathblow. Most characters also lean towards certain elements. Linhart's attacks and specials lean towards Wind, Balthus has Fire, Shez and Hubert have Dark, and so on. By checking which units learn which abilities and combat arts upon progressing and mastering a class, class, you can really start to unlock their potential. A really straightforward example of this is Shez themselves. While he can learn a bunch of elemental combat arts like Tornado Shot, Thunderbolt, and Lightning Axe, if you check his learned abilities as Dark Mage, he learns Essence of Darkness which enhances his dark magic damage. And so, I started to build Shez into a magic-based sword class. He gets a unique mastery class, and while I won't spoil what exactly he learns, he does learn a dark magic spell that of course works very well with having Essence of Darkness in hand. Similarly, this would enhance the damage of Shadowblade, which is learned from his Thief class. In trying to max out damage as much as you can, you can really start mixing up the learned abilities even more. Let's take Bernadetta for example. Wild Abandon from the Brigand class greatly increases damage dealt and taken. Life Force from the Mage class greatly increases damage dealt by combat arts and magic, but she takes damage proportional to the might of said combat art or spell. Fiendish Blow, learned by Warlock, increases the power of elemental effects. Moving on to Wyvern Rider, she learns Offensive Tactics, which boosts damage to enemies by 20% when a battalion is deployed. Arms Thrift from Mastering Archer reduces the cost of weapon durability ability when using a combat art or magic. All these passive abilities can be combined into Bernadetta at the same time, greatly increasing her damage output, saving the cost of her combat arts, and even enhancing abilities like Ice Blade, which she learns from the Thief class. Experiment with your favorite unit's learned abilities and combat arts and see what crazy combinations you can come up with. And that's part of the fun. There are tons of fun ability combinations that synergize well. For example, combining life force with defiant abilities, or using elemental essence abilities to help enhance strong attacks, combat arts, and magic. You can even build a very strong supportive character with their assist abilities if they are paired well and supporting the right kind of unit. Next up is something way more obscure in comparison, teachable combat arts. This adds more depth to unit customization. The max level of combat arts is level 3, which basically 
typically means the art will be stronger. Sometimes, upon mastering the combat art at level 3, a tiny speech bubble will appear above it in the set abilities menu. This means that this unit can teach the combat art to another unit who can't naturally get it. There are a few requirements for this to be attained though. Let's use Yuritsa and Hubert as examples. Hubert will be able to teach Meyer upon level 3. To teach that to Yuritsa, Yuritsa cannot be able to learn the art himself. He needs to have A rank in Reason, and A is the minimum rank for any combat art regardless if the art in question is learned from an intermediate, advanced, or master class, and they need to have a C support minimum. Then you enter a battle, set Yuritsa, the learner, to Hubert, the teacher's adjutant, and spam the combat art over and over again until it is learned. Once that's done, congratulations! Yuritsa can use Meyer that can work well with his Essence of Darkness. Currently, we don't know all of the teachable arts yet, but there are community efforts to figure them all out. It understandably takes a while since there are many arts to master for each character in the game. Finally, every unit has an innate ability they can learn. Upon mastering a certain master class, a unit will learn a new ability unseen in the ability list. For example, Balthus and Edelgard will learn Nullify Magic upon mastering Dark Bishop and Grammarie respectively. Kaspar and Shez will learn Extended Range upon mastering Dark Knight. So, who knows? Maybe mastering a certain master class will give you a new ability to play with. There is a list of these somewhere on the internet, but as far as I know it comes with the entire data mine on the full game, so search at your own risk. Level up slash reset. The first of these two options are self-explanatory. You can spend gold, and the price of this can be reduced through upgrading the facility to level up any unit. The max you can level up is capped at your highest leveled unit, so it's really useful to bring benchwarmers up to speed, although leveling Linhart from level 20 to 70 is pretty costly. Reset is also an option. If you reset, you go back to level 1, but why would you do this? This way you can reroll a unit with a brand new class and with modified growths. For example, this is exactly what I did. Say that I've been using a strength-based Shez up until level 50, but I want to turn Shez into a magic user. If I reset his level, reclass him into Dark Bishop, and level him up to 50, my Shez will now have a massive magic stat that will be useful for using the Leaven Sword, spells, or other weapons that calculate damage with magic instead of strength. Essentially, you re-roll their stats. It's really useful to optimize a unit's stats to correspond with the class you want them in. It's fun, and now my Shez has a stupidly high magic stat. That. It's also worth mentioning here that similar to three houses, master classes aren't necessarily strictly better class options than advanced. Sometimes they are, like with Wyvern Master and Dark Bishop and Gremory, but Paladin has two class gauges instead of Holy Knight's one, and Swordmaster has a 30% speed growth modifier versus Mortal Savant's literally 0%. Tactics Instructor You can't have all these crazy cool ability combinations working at once without first unlocking more class ability slots at the Tactics Instructor. Here you can upgrade things like the aforementioned slots, enhance your personal support and tactic abilities, increase the amount of vulneraries held, enhance crest effects if applicable, and so on. So don't forget to unlock ability slots and action ability level for sure, and you could upgrade the others as you see fit depending on what kind of build you have. Battalions a less important way to further power up a unit is assigning a battalion to them. While battalions are honestly pretty lame in this game, and feel like an afterthought, but I digress, that's for another video, you can assign battalions which will enhance or reduce the effect of the weapon triangle, among other things. In practice, this doesn't increase damage dealt to certain weapon types, that's what breaker class abilities are for, but they do increase stun gauge damage and knockback. You can double down on the weapon triangle or have more coverage of the triangle. For example, if you gave a sword-wielding Shez a battalion that gives an advantage against swords, they now have an advantage on swords and axes. You also need battalions equipped for abilities like offensive, defensive, and seasoned tactics. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of the training instructor and abilities now that you did 10 minutes ago. It's a fun system they have going on, especially for people who want to min-max damage on their favorite unit and showcase them in battle and to their friends. If you liked this video, even if you knew everything that I talked about already, please leave a like and let me know what you think of the class system or even your favorite build you've made. Just be sure not to mention any spoiler territory characters in the comments since this game is still relatively new. Thank you everyone for subscribing to the channel. It's less than 500 subscribers away from 97,000. Every day and every video, the channel gets closer and closer to that big number. So if you haven't subscribed yet but you are watching, please consider it. I will be making more guide videos like this since it's good content for the game and they're all story character spoiler free. So expect more stuff like this in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching. Deuces.